What's up guys? I just want to give you a quick sort of uh, informative video on something called reverse dieting and metabolic damage. So uh, I've got a little graph behind me just so that you can sort of get a visual for, for what I'm talking about. But basically metabolic damage is where you become uh, efficient at using the calories that you're consuming. So it usually occurs after you've been in a period of diet and uh, you, all of you would have seen it. You've been doing your diet for say 12 weeks, your weight loss has dropped off, then you uh, sort of go back to eating normally or a little bit more, then you start to stack on the weight again. That point there where you're sort of increasing your calories and gaining a shit ton of weight, that's because you're metabolically damaged. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of an overview of what it is and what you need to do to uh, sort of compensate for it. But on the whiteboard here, on the, I'll stand this side, we've got the time underneath, on this bottom axis, we've got the calories up the side. You'll see why it's that way in a second. But so for example, if your calorie intake is usually around 2000, so we use the red pen for the calorie intake, it's around 2000, and then all of a sudden you drop down to a thousand calories because you're on a diet, okay? That is far too low for most people. But for example, let's just use a thousand because it's an easy number. So if you stay on that diet for a few weeks, that's your calorie intake. And we'll say this is sort of 12 weeks time. Okay, what happens to your metabolic rate? So your metabolic rate is the rate in which you burn calories to create movement, uh, the long and the short of it. But we'll use the purple pen to display our metabolic rate. Now, the metabolic rate may be up at around 2000 because you're not losing any weight, you're not gaining any weight while you're eating a 2000 calorie diet. Once you start to drop the calories to create that weight loss, your metabolic rate will stay fairly high for a while, but then it will start to taper off down to meet your calorie intake. So all of you will have seen this, where this area here is fat loss. Now at the start of your, your, your sort of diet, you're gonna lose an absolute shit ton of weight in the first couple of weeks, and then it'll start to taper off. That's because you become more efficient at using the calories that you're taking in. Now, if you prolong that duration, it's just going to get worse and worse, and you're going to be more metabolically damaged, and that's harder to reverse. Um, that this is a very drastic um, sort of over exaggeration of the process, but just for a bit of a demo, it's just easier to show you this way. Right, so. If you get to that point and you go, oh, I'm not losing any more weight, I might as well just eat back normally, what will happen is your calorie intake will come back up to what it was before. Usually you go over and above just because you're so frigging hungry, but your metabolic rate stays fairly low and it doesn't recover as quick as you can eat more. So all of this now is fat gain. But within any sort of diet, you're gonna lose about 25% uh, of the total mass that you lose in muscle mass. So now muscle mass, you have to sort of burn calories to keep it maintained. So if you've lost, say, 20 pounds, five of that you can expect to be muscle. Now, if you haven't got that five pounds of muscle, but you're eating that weight, as, uh, eating that amount of calories as if you did, you're gonna be gaining even more weight because you're not gonna have to spend those calories to maintain the muscle. So. If we were in this position here and keep going up, over time, yes, it would slowly increase, but you're gonna gain a load of weight in the meantime, probably more than you did when you started the diet. So this is where the yo-yo dieting comes in. So you, everyone will know someone, it might even be you, that's uh, sort of gone on, let's say Slimming World or sort of Weight Watchers, they've lost an absolute shit ton of weight and then stack it back on when they stop going. This is why. Okay, but, there is a way where you can fix it. So let's just take it back to that point there. So this is a very drastic diet, but there's a way to uh, sort of increase your met rate as you gradually gain calories and uh, yeah, just get you back up to a normal metabolic rate in a better position to lose fat and uh, sort of maintain as much muscle mass as possible. But so this is where the reverse diet comes into it. Now a reverse diet is basically the flip opposite of that, a bit in a staggered progression. So your calorie intake, so let's say each of these lines down here is a week. What you would do is increase your calorie intake by 100 calories or so, something very small. Obviously, uh, if you're a bigger person, then you can afford to sort of uh, 
increase your calorie intake by 200 calories rather than 100. But um, I would also always advise to go smaller just because it's going to be way more efficient and uh, you're not going to gain as much weight in the whole process. But more on that in a second. So you've increased your calorie intake by let's say 200 calories. You're going to maintain that for a week, then you're going to increase it another 200. Maintain that for a week, increase for 200, and so on and so forth. Whilst this is happening, it does give your metabolic rate, this purple line, chance to basically do that and rise with your food intake. Now don't get me wrong, these bits above this line are all going to be fat gain or weight gain, but the bits underneath the metabolic rate are going to be fat loss. So if that's equal, you might gain a pound one week and might lose it the next. So ideally, theoretically, by the time you finish your uh, reverse diet, you shouldn't actually have put any weight on from where you were. So if you're eating way more food and not gaining weight, that puts us in a perfect position to lose weight or lose fat. So if we imagine we're just here, I'm gonna get rid of all of this. So our food intake is at around 2,000 and our ooh, wrong lid, metabolic rate is again at about 2,000. So what we want to do is maintain our metabolic rate as high as we can go. Try and maintain that as best we can because that just puts in a position to burn calories uh, that, we, that we're using basically. So, so when we come to the diet process of uh, the, the, the whole reverse dieting protocol, what we want to do is try and maintain the metabolic rate as high as possible. Now there's, there's one of the best ways to do that is to drop calorie intake for a short period of time, like I said, intermittent dieting effectively. That just means that we can get a substantial amount of weight loss, but maintain the metabolic rate. So what I would suggest is uh, realistically never dropping your calorie intake by more than 500 calories from what you're doing, just because it's gonna give you that peace of mind, uh, just knowing that you can actually eat a large amount of food, because there's a lot of people that will drop way further down, somewhere around a thousand calories, and uh, they get, you, you're basically gonna make yourself psychologically unstable because trust me, it sucks. And then you're gonna feel shit, you're gonna feel worn out, you're not gonna feel too good about it. And it's not something that you're gonna adhere to. So the best diet is one that you're gonna stick to. So if you can eat loads of food and really enjoy it, even better. Now, <clears throat> if you wanted to uh, sort of get the best amount of weight loss possible, I would always suggest somewhere between one and two pounds a week. Obviously, that is going to stall or slow down over the time because you're going to have a, a smaller percentage of body fat to lose the further you diet. Okay, so if you had a 500 calorie deficit in the diet, that is going to equate to a pound of fat loss a week. If you wanted to increase that to two pounds of fat loss a week, you could either drop the calories, which is what I don't suggest you do, or for that period of time, you could increase your energy expenditure or your metabolic rate. So um, creating that 1,000 calorie deficit through exercise as well as a uh, sort of a, a lower amount of calories that you consume. Now, once we've done that, say, let's say this is a week. Once we've done that, we're going to maintain the calorie intake at a steady level for, say, maybe two days. And again, run the whole process again and again and again. Eventually, it will end up looking something like this as your metabolic rate will slowly come down. But let's say this is over the course of a year. Um, yeah, so it's going to take way longer for that to decrease. You're going to lose way more fat in the process. All these sort of, oh, missed it. Yeah, all these areas are going to be fat loss. Now, you're going to retain as much muscle mass as possible. You're going to adhere to it better because realistically, you're going to be eating more food, so you're going to be more likely to actually stick to it and not cheat. Um, and yeah, it's just way more beneficial for you because yeah, you're going to lose way more fat, not just weight, so you're going to retain some muscle. 
You're not going to damage yourself phys physio physiologically and psychologically. So you're more likely to stick to it, you're going to lose more weight and you can prolong the whole process that little bit longer. So if each one of these is uh, two pounds of weight loss, it's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. It's 20 pounds in let's say a year, that's massive. So nearly nearly two stone, well two and a half stone, but um, nearly one and a half stone, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's over a course of a year. In that whole year, imagine if you didn't do this process and you're still at the bottom of that um, metabolic damage uh, slope. So if you're down there, you're just gonna be gaining so much fat. Now this is something that you could prolong over the course of maybe two, three, four years. So keeping that steady, progressive results is gonna be what's gonna keep you going, just keep you motivated. You're gonna get better results quicker and you're gonna feel way better for it. And plus, in that time, you're going to have gained some muscle mass, so the weight loss isn't going to be sort of relative. Because obviously, the more muscle you gain, you're going to weigh heavier on the scales, but you still might be losing that two pounds of fat. So don't worry too much about what the scales say. If you follow this process, you're on for a winner, and trust me, you'll feel so much better for it. But um, if you've got any issues with that, and you feel like you need a little bit of support, a little bit of guidance, uh, leave some comments in the, in the, uh, the comment area below. Uh, or just reach out and uh, contact me directly by email, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all sorts of different ways. But yeah, just get in touch if you need a little bit more explanation um, or, or just sign up to the, the free email because there's loads of different content in there that uh, you'll, you'll get cleared up on. But um, yeah, give it a go. If you struggle, get in touch. But see you later.